All right, guys, I think I got this outside Hellcat going here. Boom, yep, hooked up. Might have had another one. I think he dropped it. Nope, he is there. That one smoked some line off. There he goes. Hey, guys, I'm Dieter Melhorn. It's springtime, early springtime. Water's still cold. What's the best catfish bait to be using? Stay tuned. We're going to find out. All right, guys, rolling down the road here, getting ready to drop the boat in the water. We've had some warm temperatures the past week while I was out of town and couldn't fish. Now it's back to eh, a little more normal spring, early spring temperatures. It's chilly today. It's in the low 50s. Like I said, we had a week of warm weather. Water temperatures were up to 61 yesterday. It's pretty warm. So we're going to go drop the boat in the water, see if we can catch some catfish. All right, let's get this boat ready to go. Here's how I do it, guys. I already unhooked my front, but I take my rope. Find the end of it I'm here somewhere. I'll hook mine onto my bumper. That way it'll float off. Be good to go. I'm not following y'all, I promise. Crappy fishing? Uh, crappy and hurt. I was gonna say, have you been right inside? Uh, Right there past the point. Yeah. I was gonna say, cause I noticed some boats in there yesterday. I didn't know if they were actually there or not. Good luck guys. Yeah, it looks like uh, those guys and me are the only ones out here fishing today. Not a big crowd out here. It's kind of overcast. We had a lot of rain last night and this morning. So I came out here kind of late today. A lot of water into the lake. I'm curious if they're pulling any water. My plan is to go up in a river and see if there's any water flowing in. We'll go see what's going on. All right, guys, made a run. Uh, into some muddy water. We got some current up here. Not a lot. It's a, uh, I don't know, probably three quarter mile an hour, just enough to uh, get some scent spread, but it's muddy. So some of the inflow from the rain last night. So let's get some baits in the water, see if there are any fish moved up in here. Yeah, y'all know the deal. Y'all know the truth. I'm gonna have me some chicken. Now, with that said, I do have some perch. I'm gonna put out some big baits. I've got two different rods y'all can keep track at home. I got some of these uh, big cat fever. These are medium light trolling rods. It's a lighter weight rod. It will put some fish in a boat. Just for the record, we had a 11, 12 year old kid catch a 47 pounder on one of these rods. So they'll bring the fish in. A little girl caught one. She's eight on one of these Hellcats yesterday. It was 19 pounds. These are medium action. This is gonna have the big baits. I've got some bigger hooks, some bigger peg floats. I'm leaving Santee rigs out on everything today. I started to retie and put some Carolina rigs on, but this current ain't that bad. These weights will stay on the bottom with these baits. We're gonna get them out here, get them in the water and uh, see what we can catch. Let's bait up first. Like I said on the lighter rods, smaller hooks, I'm putting the chicken on. Who knows what they're gonna hit up here. Who knows if they're even up here. That's the thing. There's our chicken. No chicken bait, nothing but chicken breast. Nothing fancy to this. No jello, no Kool-Aid, no garlic. Not that those things won't work, but I'm just not using them today. We're only in about six feet of water. So we're relatively shallow up here. I don't think that's gonna make a hill of beans difference. I had planned to try a little bit of shallow stuff today just to see if it would work. I don't think we're gonna get any water heating up today. It's at uh, 58 up here. So it's actually a little cooler than the main lake. Main lake riding up here was around, uh, the ride up was right around 60. So a little bit cooler, but I don't think it's gonna have a significant impact on fish. One thing about catfish is they're not like bass in that they're just gonna get shut down totally, especially coming here into the spring. Things were getting more and more daylight, warmer and warmer water. Things are starting to ramp up. It's not on fire yet by any means, but it's getting there. And I don't think things are gonna shut down because of a little bit colder water. All right, guys, I think I got this outside Hellcat going here. Boom, yep, hooked up, hooked up. There we go. Don't think he's a monster. He didn't really smash that one like I was hoping, but we've been sitting here for every bit of eight minutes, maybe 10, and we're hooked up on a fish. So I'll take that, I'll take that. I'll take it. Wondering, new to the channel, Abby Garcia 6500 on the Hellcats. Uh, and I've got Andy Monofilament. I got a rod going right there. There's another one. That one's sucking some line off on that side. So we got two rods loaded up. 
Let me get this one in. He took a little bit of lime. That is another Hellcat on cut bait. So two for cut bait. I'm gonna tell you what, yesterday the fish came on cut bait. We only caught two. We only messed around for a little bit, but they both came on cut bait. Let's see what this one looks like here, guys. Good blue. A few battle scars. To cut us up another piece of bait though. You got away with that one. I think, I'm not sure if that one had the head on it. I think it did. Good blue. Some bleeding going on there. Thank God. Hope there ain't a hook in it. A little bit of mud. But they're up and active. Let's go check that other one out. Let's get this one back though. All right. Let's see what this one's got going on. Boom. He's on there. That fish is on there. A little heavier. Not a giant. Trying to play that current though, I can tell you that. Again, this one's on cut bait. Medium action, Hellcat rod. I think my any reverse is shot in that one. Handles loose too. This one looks like he may be tail wrapped. That may be why he's coming in so rough. Hoop, he is tail wrapped. That'll be a mess. I think he's about the same size as the last fish, to be honest. Yep, he is totally tail wrapped. There we go. Pulled loose. There he goes. Now he's acting like he's in shallow water. <laughs> okay. There he goes. He's alive now. They get unwrapped like that. If they start to th thrash and flail around, you best to give them a little bit of line, let them come unwrapped nice and loose. Is he netable? I think I may have to on this one. Looks like he may be a low teen sized fish. Let me get him up here. Boom. In the net. Take a fish like that all day long. Look out of there. There we go. Do I get my bait too? Oh, that's my perch head. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. I want my perch head back. Oh, yes. Got my perch head. That one must have been on a body chunk then if that one came on the perch head. Get that all undone. What's he going to weigh? What's he going to weigh? Oh, yeah. About 15 pounds. We'll take that. We'll take us a 15. Take it to the bank. Boom, we got another rod going. Look at that. That rod right there. Chicken bait's got one going now. I got a rod right there. I got that one going, the fish in my hand. We got another fish. Hang out. Get him back. Let's get this one. See if it's on there. Boom, it is. <laughs> Can't make this up, guys. It's three fish in a row. This is a smaller one. Chicken fish. So got one over here we got to put a piece of bait on. They're feeding. I don't know if we got a pack of us. Channel cat. That is a channel cat. Woohoo. Might be able to get us a slam going. We will see. A little small channel. Coming in and out on that chicken. We'll take him. Get him back alive. Get some baits back in the water. All right, guys, there's three fish in the boat very quickly. I think I may have been here eight or 10 minutes. Uh, I was just kind of getting settled settled in. Boom, how'd a rod go? That's awesome. Two of them came on cut bait. Uh, the perch, one of them on the perch head, one of them on a body chunk, and then that other smaller channel cat came on a piece of chicken. Uh, I don't know if we had a little pack of them move through here. Sometimes, like I said, I swear, you get a fish that bites and it like, there's gotta be an energy transmitted through the water when that happens, cause it's like another one will bite. Maybe there was a little pack of them moving through here. I don't know, whatever the combination is, we'll take it. Three fish that quick, pretty happy. Especially get one that's about 14 pounds, that was nice. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on my baits today though, because uh, when you get a lot of rainwater, 
uh, like this coming in, you get a lot of debris in the water and leaves and stuff. So you can accumulate some trash on your lines and on your rigs, especially if you're using the Santee rigs, like I'm using that are floating the baits up off the bottom, you'll end up getting debris. On the line, it can kind of lift them and float them and drag them and get them into a pile. So it's worth keeping an eye on them when you're like that. But nice little setup here with the anchors. It looks like I've got more current going that way for some reason. I got a little bit of sway here with the uh, boat going on, not much though. I just got one anchor out. We've got enough current, should hold us tight. And uh, we'll give it a little while longer here and see if some more fish show up. That one smoked some line off before I could get to it. There he goes. I say good. I think it's about like that last one in the teens. See what we got here. Fresh piece of bait put out on that side. Ah, that one is through that line. He's kind of going where he wants, so we might be pulling some line in here. There we go, there we go. We'll take that. We like a little rod bend. He is in this outside line. If you see this rod moving here, guys, he got into that line. I tried to steer him, but it didn't work. He's wrapped up too. Man, these things go to rolling in the dog. Oh, get out of that line. Did we clear that one? No. Nope. We might have a mess. This is not as big a fish as I thought. Not as big as I thought. He just went crazy. Boy, he hit it like a lot bigger fish. Try to nurse him in a little bit here. He is into this outside line. And as many of y'all know, nothing will make you lose a fish quicker than having another line wrapped around it somewhere. Ah, he may be bigger than I thought. Let me net him. I'm going to do him a favor and net him. A little bigger than I thought. Yeah, when they're in the mud, you don't always get a good look at them. Get him in here. All right. We'll take him. Soak. Now you can go nuts. Boom, got a little mud. A little mud on the tires. Out doing some feeding and eating the perch heads. We'll take him. Get back in there. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, another teener, low teener, barely a teener, but teener nonetheless. I thought that was on a piece of fresh cut bait up it out, but it was actually the head that I caught the 14, 15 pounder on. So, so yeah, it was that same piece of bait. I put it back out and boom, it hit that one. So four fish, less than an hour. Pretty good fishing in my book. Uh, pretty good catch and good catch rate. Obviously, I think the, uh, I think the water conditions are playing a part having the uh, newfound current up here and inflow of water. I think that's making a difference in getting these fish to bite. Uh, that happens a lot of times when you are the basically first one on the pond after one of these rain events. It can be very productive and uh, it seems to get fish active and get them moving and get them feeding because stuff's getting washed in. Worms are getting washed in. Uh, you know, baits getting stirred up. A lot of times bait doesn't like the dirty water so they're moving maybe to find cleaner water so there's just some activity going on add to that if you got some cut bait out you got scent getting spread around and that helps you guys that are on constant water flow all the time it's a little different story but if you go from you know a river that's very 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 low flow to all of a sudden boom you got a rain event it's kind of the same thing but here on these reservoirs, power, dam, generation, that type thing, Tennessee River, stuff we have here on the Catawba, the Savannah River, those type places, it makes a difference. It's something to keep an eye on, uh, keeping an eye on the weather, uh, what's going on with the weather, what's been happening. Good fishing, good catching. I can't complain. Might have had another one. I had another one hit this head, but I think he dropped it. Nope, he is there. Boom. Boom. This is the same head we caught the big fish on. And the last one, uh, same piece of bait. Makes you wonder, is it the bait? Or is it the location in the water where this bait is at? I would argue it's the location and the bait. But I think it's more the location. We got the same bait on that side of the boat. While we've caught fish, we've had three on one piece of bait. Interesting, isn't it? Not a giant, but we'll take it. Happy to be catching fish. This was a good gamble. Nice fish. Not a super whopper. Another blue. 
Another one on the Hellcat. Easy, easy. Are you hooked good enough to lift in? Oh, boom, got him. Tore the hook out the minute he hit the ground. Come here, sucker. Simma, simma, simma. Nice little eater size blue there. Eat my cut bait. My bait's gone now. It did not survive the toss into the boat. It's all right. Active blue cats early in the spring, pre spawn. They're getting hungry. Let's get it back alive. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, another teener, low teener, barely a teener, but a teener nonetheless. I thought that was on a piece of fresh cut bait I put out, but it was actually the head that I caught the 14, 15 pounder on. So, so yeah, it was that same piece of bait. I put it back out and boom, it hit that one. So four fish, less than an hour. Pretty good fishing in my book. Uh, pretty good catch and good catch rate. Obviously, I think the uh, I think the water conditions are playing a part having the uh, newfound current up here and inflow of water. I think that's making a difference in getting these fish to bite. Uh, that happens a lot of times when you are the basically first one on the pond after one of these rain events. It can be very productive and uh, it seems to get fish active and get them moving and get them feeding because stuff's getting washed in, worms are getting washed in, uh, you know, baits getting stirred up. A lot of times bait doesn't like the dirty water so they're moving maybe to find cleaner water so there's just some activity going on add to that if you got some cut bait out you got scent getting spread around and that helps you guys that are on constant water flow all the time it's a little different story but if you go from you know a river that's very 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 low flow to all of a sudden boom you got a rain event it's kind of the same thing but here on these reservoirs power dam generation that type thing tennessee river stuff we have here on the catawba the savannah river those type places it makes a difference it's something to keep an eye on uh keeping an eye on the weather uh what's going on with the weather what's been happening good fishing good catching i can't complain boom there that one goes there he goes on top of the water yes sir yes sir that's the one we didn't hook up on a minute ago or at least the same rod that was going it's all cut bait today guys we'll get to that in a minute but every fish has come on one of these hellcat rods with cut bait all my green hellcat rods have cut bait on there we go there we go It's a good bite. It's a good bite. This is numbers wise about as good as it gets. This kind of catch rate. I mean, we're talking maybe an hour of fishing here. It's a tremendous catch rate. This is good. You're not going to win a tournament with these fish on this lake, but it's good fishing. Real good fishing. I think I might have to net this one. Hard to tell sometimes in this mud. It's hard to get a net shot on them too sometimes. I don't know exactly where they at. Luckily I got about 24 inches a liter, so I usually see that sinker. Got him in the net. I'm having a pretty good day. Oh, another good looking fish. 13. Another 13 pounder. He has got a bite mark on it. I don't know if that's last year's bite mark or not. A little early for any spawning activity there, but get him in there. Yeah, a little bite mark. Probably one of last year's. Look at that, clear as a bell though. Good fish, back alive. So what are some tips for catching these early spring catfish? Well, one of them uh, was, well, what I was alluded to there with that last fish, and that is uh, cut bait. It seems like the this time of the year, there's almost like a feed up coming into the pre-spawn. And cut bait, seems to be a better 
bait to use now. With that said, uh, I still catch a lot of fish on chicken in the springtime. And some days it's better than others. It usually outperforms it, but spring seems to be a big feed at time. And that's when those big baits can come into play. Another thing, and this is for you bank anglers, very important. It's a good time of the year for you guys because a lot of these fish are moving shallower. And even if you don't have access to deep water from wherever you're bank fishing, this can be the time of the year when you start seeing those fish up cruising the bank. Even if you can only hit four or five feet of water, certain times of the day, certain weather conditions in the spring, especially as the water temperatures start to warm up, it can be a time you guys can pick off some fish without having a boat, without having the best places, uh, the best access in the world. It's payoff time for bank fishermen. So spring's a good time. Uh, it's, uh, you know, with these temperatures, you know, here early in spring, it's just getting started. This is just the beginning. There'll be some ups and downs. I was looking at our weather forecast for the next several days. It's going to be back down to 23 one day. So it's still cold weather, but slowly but surely, it's getting warmer and warmer. And uh, it's a great time to be out on the water. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no, do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.